OK, onward to foreign key goodness. OK, we're continuing our tour of things to make your app more powerful, yet always beautiful and compact, uh, associations and foreign keys. And our motivating example here is we want to institute a review system for Rotten Potatoes. The reviews are going to be really simple. It's just how many potatoes out of five does a movie get? And the goal is to easily represent the concept that a single movie could have many reviews because many different people would write them. So what's the, what's the code that we would like to write in order to do this? If, if, if we didn't have to worry about dealing with a, a database and the fact that that's ultimately where all this is going to be stored, here's an example of what I claim looks like the code we would like to write. Uh, so an example is we have a movie that exists already, and we've got two moviegoers. And each moviegoer could create a review expressing their opinion of the movie. And ideally, we'd like to say that here's the movie, and we're going to set its reviews to be the array of the reviews that Alice and Bob have created. And by saving the movie, we've implicitly saved along with it all of the reviews. In other words, the illusion we'd like to have is that each movie is an object that has an attribute that's basically an array of all the reviews, along with the identity of the moviegoer who created it. Um, and since the idea that a single moviegoer could also create many reviews, we could say, well, here's uh, Alice, the moviegoer, also has an attribute, reviews, which is a list of all the reviews Alice has written. So really, we, we're, we're really talking about being able to get at reviews two different ways. One of them is, given a movie, we would like to believe that uh, there's an array of all of its reviews that sort of travels around with it. The other way is, given a moviegoer, we would like to believe that there is a, an array of all the reviews written by that moviegoer that travel around with her or him. Um, and in fact, we'd like to be able to just treat this as a collection. So we could say, given all of the reviews of this movie, um, suppose we, we want to find out who wrote each one of the reviews. Well, we could just pretend it's a collection, right? If it's a collection, we can run a map on it. And the map operation is, for each review, grab the name of the moviegoer that wrote it. So this is the code we would like to write. If, if we didn't have to worry about the fact that these things are being stored in a relational database, this is what the code would look like in terms of traversing the data objects. So. Um, of course, I wouldn't present that as a motivating example unless there was actually a way to make the code look that way. Um, so to do that, let's introduce, or if you've seen databases before, briefly review the concept of the Cartesian product of tables. So here I have uh, a table of um, hypothetical artists, uh, artists so-called, pop artists, whatever. Uh, I also have a table of reviews, reviews which have a very short description of somebody's opinion of that artist. Um, and I could take the Cartesian product of these two individual tables, which means I'm going to take every combination of rows from the tables and sort of mash them together. So the Cartesian product means that, for example, for this first row in the artist table, we're going to match it up with every possible row in the reviews table. So we get three copies of it. Similarly, for the second and the third row in the artist table. So overall, the total number of rows in the Cartesian product is the, the number of rows in one times the number of rows in the other. Right. All we've done is take every row from one table and match it up with every possible row of the second table. That's brain-dead stupid operation. And then from among those, we could select out, um, suppose that we had added to this reviews table an artist ID. Uh, in other words, we're, we're referencing the artist that this review is supposedly about. What that would allow us to do is, in a very simple algorithmic way, go through our Cartesian product and say, look only at the cases where the artist ID from the review matches the primary key of the artist. right? So if we filter and say ex only include the rows where those two numbers match, then what we get is a filtered Cartesian product where we said we're joining the two tables, but we're joining it on this constraint condition. We're including only the rows for which this constraint condition is true. right? And then that's what we're left with. right? So uh, you can see kind of where we're going with this. right? We're taking the basic structure of a table with attributes, and we're going to use it to model the concept of one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships using this trick of foreign keys. So how do you represent this in, in, you know, in terms of the relational model? What is it we just did? Well, we basically created a foreign key, which is a field in one table that refers to the primary key of something in another table. And in our example, what we did is in our hypothetical table of reviews, it has its own primary key. That, that identifies the particular review. But we also added a new key, or a new field, called movie ID. And there was, the idea is that this is going to refer to the movie whose primary key is the one that this review is about. Oh, yeah, and then the number of potatoes, right? That's the thing that we actually care about in the review. So when you do a join, what you're doing is you're combining records from two or more tables. And usually, you're constraining the join by specifying some constraint 
on, private, uh, on uh, primary keys and foreign keys. So the example that we showed before was saying, join the movies and reviews table. In other words, hypothetically, take every movie and match it up with every review, but then only keep the ones where the primary key of the movie matches the movie ID key of the review. Um, and if you're interested in SQL, the way the SQL statement looks is you're selecting from these two tables. So this is basically saying, begin by taking the Cartesian product of these two tables, and then down select so that you're only keeping the rows where the ID, the primary key from the movies table, matches the movie ID in the reviews table. Now, you can imagine in real life, the database doesn't really materialize the entire Cartesian product and then throw away most of it. Right? There's, the database engineering has many good algorithms for computing this. But the theoretical model is basically the one that we explained. The theoretical model is you have the full Cartesian product, and then you're going to take a subset of it. That's a join. So before we do a code example for that, um, here's a question about Cartesian products. Which statement is false about the way that you can use them to represent data relationships? Uh, that you can represent one-to-one -one relationships as well as one-to-many. Uh, so is that statement true or false? You can represent many-to-many, -many, uh, which we didn't show in our example. The size of the full Cartesian product is independent of the joining criteria, so independent of the filtering. Uh, or you can only filter based on the primary or foreign key columns, namely the ones that, that have uh, ID as part of the column name. So think about that for a moment, and then we'll do a vote. <laughs> 